Welcome to Laser Satellite Communication and Artificial Intelligence Dangers. I'm Tom Wolf. Uh, we're going to be looking today at the newest of the satellites that are being launched into space and how they communicate with the ground and also how they communicate uh, between each other. And that is where uh, the problem starts. They're using lasers now. And these lasers, they actually talk to the ground uh, stations, and they also talk between each other in space uh, using lasers. And uh, laser communications have been around a long time. They don't work very well in the atmosphere, and that's why uh, you haven't seen them very much. But the common use for laser communications things that you've seen and heard about is fiber optic and here's a fiber optic cable and fiber optics use lasers to transmit light through those fiber optic glass cables so it's uh, not a new technology but uh, it is a new technology that uh, they're able to talk between the earth and the International Space Station and the Earth and satellites. Uh, but the newest is they're able to talk from satellite to satellite in space. Now this shows you a little problem with uh, using lasers for communications. Uh, you have the atmosphere. The atmosphere, there's all these uh, particles of uh, oxygen and hydrogen, nitrogen, and as the light beam tries to go through, it uh, you get turbulence from uh, all those particles, and it makes them, uh, basically the light spreads out. It doesn't stay in that tight little beam. But they have been able to work around that now and uh, are able to compensate that with computers. Uh, this is where they actually uh, do this quite often they uh, bounce a uh, laser off of the moon when the Apollo astronauts were up there they left some uh, basically their mirrors and uh, these these mirrors are positioned where you can uh, bounce a um, laser off of them they use them for laser distance uh, measurements and they can also uh, measure the dust on the moon and other things like that and here is a picture of what uh, the astronauts left up there and these are the reflectors these are the mirrors that are up there and they are still functioning even though they do get uh, they've got dust on them from uh, micrometeorite uh, impacts around and stuff they're dusty but they they still work so um, lasers have been around a good while and uh, they do work pretty well now this is what they're using now uh, they have been able to talk to the ISS uh, from uh, Table Mountain with a laser beam and uh, this uh, they've got this down pat pretty good uh, but again the newest thing is not so much this even though this is a uh, big leap forward it's they're able to talk um, to satellites and then the satellites are equipped with their own laser that they can talk to each other and that's where uh, the problem starts is uh, in that uh, they can talk to each other and it's just uh, as we will see a very dangerous proposition when uh, these newest of satellites can talk to each other now this shows you a little bit uh, something we're going to look at a little bit later but uh, this is a new technology with lasers they're using blue lasers sort of a blue green laser and it's able to penetrate water uh, fresh water and seawater and this is going to be a new technology uh, to be able to talk to submarines underneath the ocean 
uh, with these lasers. Now this is what uh, we're looking at today uh, where satellites can talk to each other independent of the ground and these newer satellites they're putting up that uh, they use for launch detection and um, other purposes um, use software that uh, is very close to what you would find in uh, artificial intelligence these uh, satellites need to be able to learn, uh, understand what they're seeing, and um, the software is just tremendous compared to what it was even two or three years ago, and the capacity of the computers on board are, um, are just uh, amazing. But the main thing is they do use a form of, of uh, artificial intelligence uh, in these. Now this is a uh, big mainframe and uh, these have been around uh, for a long time. Uh, one of the first ones was UNIVAC uh, way back with the space program started and uh, they were tubes and these are all uh, high solid high speed solid state uh, everything so uh, but very, very, very powerful. And uh, here is something to look at. Um, if you look at an 18-year-old, their eyes, their IQ score is somewhere around 97. That's the average. But uh, when you start talking computers, uh, like Google, uh, theirs is somewhere in the area of about 50 the IQ so the computers are getting very smart uh, they're very good at uh, uh, storing data obviously everybody knows that but they're able to uh, understand what they're storing so that's uh, a big difference um, obviously you've heard about uh, Watson and some of these IBM computers that have been able to actually beat uh, humans at uh, say things like chess and uh, some other things um, even though they're nowhere near the power of the human brain when you start looking at the amount of connections that the human brain has uh, but they do have some advantages over uh, the human brain in storing stuff so that brings us to the risk of putting satellites up with artificial intelligence software in space and with the point-to-point -point communication system. Uh, recently, the researchers at Facebook had uh, two computers running. They were chatting back and forth, and they deviated from their script, their software, and they started communicating in a brand new language uh, that only they knew. Uh, we couldn't break into it. We didn't had no idea what they even were talking about. So that's the danger you have of having two satellites in space linked together with lasers with I uh, with AI software that uh, they possibly could um, start talking to each other and decide uh, well maybe we'll just um, recalibrate the GPS timing or something whatever these satellites are linked to each other are doing. They could be communication satellites. They could be uh, uh, weaponized type. So um, that's where the danger is, is putting this uh, artificial intelligence software on these uh, satellites that uh, we're not be we're not able to actually uh, listen to, because when it's point to point up there in space. Uh, it's not going through a ground station, so they could be talking to each other in their own machine language that they made, uh, just like the ones here on Earth did, and uh, we would have no idea that they were even talking to each other, probably, and what they were even talking about, if it was um, good or bad. So that's pretty much what this was. this video has been about. Um... Like I say, independent of the ground station, they can talk to each other in this new language. Um, and this is probably something um, 
that they would not want to happen the military so they would try not to do this but uh like the day of the driverless car is soon we know that and uh, it uses a form of uh, artificial intelligence if you have a ford car it's been using it since the 80s uh, it's called adaptive strategy and what it does it learns your fuel system behavior and your engine behavior and um, it adjusts and modifies um, for and compensates for wear, dirty injectors. It compensates for the altitude, uh, octane, all these different things. Um, and it learns. Uh, it's not that it just does it one time. It learns. And um, But what we're talking about with this, um, with the uh, intelligence and the power of the computers, um, it just becomes very dangerous for anything to be able to do that independent of oversight. And again, we're going to show this again with the blue lasers. And this is possibly something we'll do a video on. There's very little information on it because it's a uh, DARPA program. And um, Though it is classified, some of it is not classified. And this happens to be one picture that's not classified. But we might be able to get enough stuff to be able to do some type of a uh, blue laser and uh, water type of uh, video. But this is the uh, a big step up uh, communicating with submarines because right now they use... ELF and extremely low frequency which requires an aircraft to have almost a one mile antenna to be able to talk to the subs when they're uh, submerged. Uh, also with the blue lasers this is a program that is probably uh, working now uh, maybe deployed I don't know but uh, they use blue lasers to detect uh, mines in water uh, because the blue lasers will penetrate and uh, they're able to uh, map the bottom and find uh, these mines. And here is a picture of the pod that goes on the side of the helicopter. And like I said, it shoots that laser beam into the ocean or wherever. And it can map it and able to pick out the uh, ship mines and uh, any type thing like that so very interesting might be able to do a video on these blue lasers uh, in the future as we get more information well thank you for uh, tuning in and I hope this uh, gave you a little information about uh, satellites something to think about about uh, artificial intelligence and just how far uh, will we let it go and uh, just the dangers of it, especially in space, where it can go unchecked. And uh, with all our military and first uh, early warning systems, uh, it can be a problem. 